Hey there fellow herb nerds, Yarrow here again, and today I am out in the wild rose patch on the ocean and the evening sky, just reminiscing in this beautiful floral fragrance of roses. Now this is a special plant that has a lot of medicine and a lot of spiritual potency and a lot of history as a love intoxicating uh, aphrodisiac and also skin toner, beauty tonic, and so much more. So join me in learning a bit about wild rose petals. We're not gonna talk about the hips as much. We'll get there in another video. But for now, we're just gonna bask in the glory of the beautiful petals of the wild rose. When it comes to rose, this is a plant you probably don't need help identifying. It's easy to identify. Wild roses have these five petals. One thing I love about them is that the petals are a heart shape, and that really is just indicative of their heart medicine, right? This is the international symbol for love, and it's been cultivated into so many different varieties. You've got double-veiled roses, you've got different colors, you've got ones with a lot of smell, a lot of fragrance, long-stemmed roses, thornless roses, you name it. There are so many types. Now, if you're gonna use rose for medicine, be careful with anything that comes from a florist because first off, often those are sprayed and often they're not very medicinal. So really wild rose is the medicine of choice. And it's also the one that is in the most abundance. Now I come from Alberta, which is considered wild rose country. And actually the school, Wild Rose College of Natural Medicine, my father's herbal school, is kind of where I grew up. So I really have an affinity for connecting with this plant. It's been a symbol of our family for a long time. And really when I kind of looked back and just thought about that, it's this love for plant medicine that roses really cultivate. They bring this connection with self. You know, the flower essence of this medicine is really for helping you work through apathy and work through disconnection. Often roses are given to people both in love, but also when someone breaks up with you or when your partnership splits apart, having roses on your counter can really help bring back that feeling of self-love. So this is a powerful medicine for bringing in this sense of just deeper connection to the heart, right? This is a heart medicine, energetically and physically. In fact, rose petals are a tonic that can actually support our heart health, support cholesterol health, support all things like this. But before we get too much into the medicine, I wanted to just mention that roses, like this whole family, is a potent plant family. This family has been feeding us for a long time. Not only are rose petals edible, but if you ever had a pear, or an apple, or a plum, or a peach, or even a hawthorn berry, these are all in the rose family. These are all roses. All their flowers are very similar. You'll notice when you go out to the flower season, every single one of these, just like a rose, has edible flowers, has edible pollen, has all edible parts, and produces a beautiful edible fruit. Now I mentioned we're not gonna talk about rose hips, but really, that is a big part of the medicine too. And we'll do another video on that because I think it's one of the most potent immune uh, medicines around that has all those flavonoids and all those rich minerals, but whoa, 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 we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about the rose petal medicine. And so what I have here is a bowl of rose petals. And I'm just collecting this. We're gonna make a few different kinds of medicine out of this. Probably my favorite is to make a rose petal honey. I really love this because it's just an easy infusion where we can infuse the petals in honey, low heat for a period of time, and then take a cheesecloth or something like this and press out the honey. And we get this really beautiful fragrant honey. We make this all the time. It's just a flavorful, enjoyable way to make our honey that much better and more a little aphrodisiac, but just a nice taste. Another thing that I would love, love, love to do, and I often have done with roses, is make a bit of an elixir. Now, there's a lot of different ways we call an elixir, but my version for today anyway, because I could define this in a bunch of different ways, is an alcohol and a honey extract. So we do about a third honey and about three quarters or two thirds of alcohol. And we would take all these and put them in a jar with that mix and make a nice rose kind of honey cordial elixir that we can start to add to mineral water. We love drinking this in the summer months. My, my partner and I just, 
love connecting over rose uh, brews of different types. So we've often made a rose infused kombucha, these rose honeys. We've even made rose toners. And this is something that's simple. If you ever heard of witch hazel extract, it's an easy thing you can pick up at the health food store. You can just infuse it with rose and make a nice rose toner. Now why we do this is because roses are one of the most toning astringent plants. They have a great capacity to tone the skin and move away from rosacea. Yeah, redness in the skin. They can be really helpful for inflammation in this way. So if we have red hot skin, whether it's a sunburn, whether it's a rash, whether it's rosacea, this could be a nice toner to put on the skin. This is part of their beauty herb medicine, right? Toning the skin, but also toning the body. So we'll see them as a tonic in the digestive system for toning the, the gut. Slightly laxative, not too bad, but they have just a really nice toning effect to any of the mucous membranes. So that's probably one of the, the more prominent medicines of rose, but really the main way in which we would work with rose is just to connect to the heart, right? It's the heart of the matter. And I think that rose just brings us to that place. And whenever I'm out in the rose patch, I feel like such a bliss. There's just such a nice feeling of just connection. So often I'll just nibble on these. I love coming out and picking them. I get a bit of a high picking flowers in general. Almost every flower gives me this feeling, but roses in particular just really bring me back into a sense of embodiment and feeling loved by this planet, feeling loved, feeling like I am giving love back and receiving love from the abundance of these beautiful flowers. Something that I'm always curious about with plants are the interesting pieces, the, especially the sexual reproductive parts of plants. Ooh, that's all where the kinky chemistry is. And in roses, as they're kind of notorious for love and connecting that kind of medicine, these, these stamen and the pollen of rose has just a really interesting feel and a nice flavor. So often, this is something I would invite you to do whenever you're crafting medicine, whenever you're connecting with plants is get curious. Let your childlike mind come in and explore the various parts. And a plant like this is totally edible. And so let's just play with it. I really like the stamen. And as I pick the flowers, I notice that there's a puff of pollen that comes up. So can I capture that puff of pollen and just help me connect deeper with that medicine? So as this is a astringent medicine, I'm noticing as I eat this pollen that it has a little bit of astringency in my mouth, which I can tell would make this really good for gum health, actually really good for oral health in general, just to help support. There's a little bit of antiseptic quality to rose too. So it is good as a first aid medicine that way, even a rose essential oil can be used, not an open wound of course, but really like to help as an antiseptic medicine to protect a cut from getting too infected, or in this case in the mouth, just to really help heal my gums and work with that. So there's an old saying, and that is that a rose by any other name would still be thorny. <laughs> well, maybe that's not how the saying goes, but, but really these thorny plants, there's medicine to them. Almost every plant that produces thorns produces a great fruit or a nice abundance of food or medicine. So I really am attracted to thorny plants. Often I wear my armor when I get out into picking these plants, but they're often my favorite. Like I love blackberry, love devil's club, hawthorn, rose, anything that has thorns to prick you has something to protect, right? So teasels and thistles and all of these plants are often some of our best foods and medicines. So rose hips are one of the best foods. Rose petals are one of the nicest fragrances and medicines. And just a really good way to know you've got a good plant is if it's thorny and not easy to capture its essence. Oh, that never gets old. That intoxication, that smell, oh, that heart connection that Rose brings. And this is something that I just wanna kinda bring in here for a moment is a lot of us have a bit of a broken heart in this life. Life is hard, things are not easy. We've been, you know, in this modern day, kind of isolated and disconnected from our planet, from each other, from feelings of love. Many people end in, their relationships end in divorce, a lot of sorrow and sadness. And sometimes even like, days like Valentine's are not happy days for people because of this connection to this sorrow. I just want to invoke and invite that 
Rose is all about self-love, not about being given love from someone else. This is an abundant medicine that offers that love connection universally to anyone. And so I would just invite, if you have any heartbreak in your life, to buy yourself some roses, to pick some roses, to grow some roses, to connect with wild roses and make rose medicine, to just bask in rose beauty. And remember that you are beautiful. That's what roses show. They come from this thorny plant and they emerge as from this, this inner beauty that is so captivating. And each one of us has this in our soul, in our hearts, as our hearts ripple with this energy, we are electromagnetic beings and our electromagnetic heart is a major oscillator in our body that amplifies this type of energy. And Rose can help kickstart that or uh, grow start that, whatever that is, into a place of bringing that further into the world. We all need love. In fact, I've heard this as a famous quote. I don't know who it was, but all you need is love, right? Ah, oh, anyway, I know that sounds cheesy, but really I'm just here as a reminder that Rose is a medicine for our time to bring back that self-appreciation, that self-connection, to move us out of our funk and get us back into being our best selves. All right, I hope you connect with Rose as a medicine, as a just way of showing up on this planet, as something that can bring more power to our hearts and amplify our mood, our energy, our body, our relationships. There are lots of things you can do with roses and I would recommend you take some time to look up some of the medicines that you can make with them, but I'll give you a few ideas right now. And actually at Wild Rose College, we are crafting up a herbal pharmacy class right now and some of the recipes will be using rose. But really the first one is that rose toner. Very simple, make a rose toner spray. And what I would recommend is you take a jar like this, put witch hazel in it, fill it, pack it full of roses, let it sit for two weeks, and then uh, strain it off, put it into a nice aromatizer, and spray it like a toner. Great for the skin, great for just freshening us up. Just a nice way to work with rose. You can also do something similar with an essential oil just in water and make a mist that way, or a hydrosol. A couple other things I like to make with rose is to actually make a rose oil, not a essential oil, but a rose infused oil with jojoba oil or grapeseed oil. This is something we would do with a double boiler. We can also do this with honey. So we can make a honey this way or an oil this way, where we pack the jar full of roses, put in our menstruum, which in this case would be oil, and we double boil it where we put a mason jar lid on the bottom so it's not touching the, the burner inside of a bath of water in a pot and slowly at a light heat kind of warm that up so that the essential oils pull out of the roses into the honey or into the oil. So making a double boiled oil extraction, honey extraction, great way to work with this. Another thing that if I mentioned already was making a elixir or a cordial. There's plenty of recipes for that. Rose is great as a shrub where we might take the rose petals, mash them up with sugar, leave them overnight, and then add them to like a drinking vinegar. Crafting something like that is amazing with rose. I've even used them as a second ferment on my kombuchas. So there's lots of things like that we can do. But when it comes to picking them and making tea, we can either dry them fresh just like this, the full petals. We wanna dry this in, in shade, or we can crush them up slightly and just kind of volatilize those oils a little bit, break open the juices, and then dry them that way. And this is actually a nice tasting tea when we do that. If when we're picking them, I would say one of the more important parts of that is that we wanna pick them on warm days where the oils are producing in higher volumes. We find that roses picked on a cold, shady, cloudy day don't taste as strong. So this has just been something, an observation I've noticed is that Hot sunny days produce better quality oils as a way of probably protecting the flowers in the rose. So make sure you pick them on a nice warm day where they're dry, not wilted. You get the idea. And lastly, I'll say when it comes to making rose into medicine, think about making a flower essence. Flowers are amazing as flower essences. And that could be really simple around taking a bowl like this or a crystal bowl preferably and covering the surface of water in flowers. 
Now, again, I was saying this flower essence is good for apathy, but it's also good for depression, for getting out of the funk of feeling stuck, right? So make a flower essence by simply covering the bowl with flower petals, filling it with water, and letting the sun penetrate through those flowers for at least four hours. Then capturing that water off, filtering off the petals, and adding some alcohol to preserve it. If we're using an alcohol, brandy is a great way to make a rose brandy. I've loved doing infused brandy that way, but often vodka is a better alcohol because it's clean and has no flavor, and you really pick up the rose flavor that way. Many of these ways of capturing rose's essence can be incorporated into making a rose love potion. So often making a shrub or an elixir or something like this, I would just recommend you make it as potent as possible. It's about the energetic vibration of love that we're bringing in. This is a big piece of this medicine. So be respectful of the roses, be connected to your heart, uh, be present and just really open up and embrace that feeling of abundance that love really is as you craft up your love potions with your rose.